In today's video, I want to answer a question that not many students nor teachers ask whenever they start introducing macros. That is, what is the difference between macros and constants? We know that they are sort of the same, but why use one over the other? So let's take a look. When you started actually using the macros, you, you probably started with something like having a max macro that represents a number the maximum number of elements in an array and this is how you would define the array using that max macro and maybe iterate over it if uh, there's a situation like that okay so you would go something like okay let's define here an array and we want of what of max number of elements and this max doesn't exist yet so we have to define it well we can define it like this i'm gonna say define max b 100 sure that works now this, if we, if we try to compile it, it works nice. I don't have to print anything on the screen. The question is, can we, can we use constants in this situation? Well, if I change this to a constant, so say const int max uh, equals a hundred. If I try to build this, it's not going to work. Seeing that expression must have a constant value in, this is only in visual studio. So in most other compilers, you might actually get this to work. This, what we defined here is in, um, in the standard is defined as a variable length array or a VLA, right? Visual Studio doesn't support this, but other compilers actually do. So this is technically fine for most, uh, for most cases. But as you can see here, it's not possible. So, and especially in older compilers, this was not possible since I think C99. So you would have had to create a macro instead of a constant. And for that reason, many uh, people actually were for using a macro instead of a constant. But why? Well, to notice the difference, you have to realize that uh, compilation is done in at least two steps in C and C++. Um, first, is the preprocessor phase. The preprocessor phase basically takes in everything, every single line that starts with a hashtag and processes it somehow. Right? So in this case, hashtag include includes this header, basically expands it to the contents of this uh, header file. So if I were to go to it, it's going to actually copy and paste this in my source file. Okay. And so it's going to do the same for stlib and string.h. And of course, if we define here max 100, and let's comment this out for a second. Also, what it's going to do is uh, when it says a define, it's going to just replace these max uh, names with the value that we passed in. So it's going to go, go ahead and actually copy and paste this in our code as if somebody does that manual manually, right? Like an actual programmer does it. Now, the next phase is the actual compilation phase. And this is where the code um, gets compiled, gets checked if everything is all right. And then it spits out an executable or some library or something. Uh, the idea is the define here, the macro is done and the preprocessor phase, right? So first, it's it's like it's like really a robot copying and pasting this max or this 100 on top of the max uh, value that it sees here. So if I use here max, it's gonna go ahead and automatically uh, copy this here. With const, so if I comment this out, with const, it's actually not that way. The preprocessor phase doesn't change this, so. Uh, when we get to compilation, we still have interray of max and the compiler says, no, you cannot actually do that because the C, uh, well, the compiler that we're using doesn't support variable length arrays in this case, right? Some compilers will support them, but they are going to be variable length arrays, not just simple arrays that have been uh, their size copied and pasted by the preprocessor. See the difference? Um, so for this matter, the macro was favorable because it 
actually was supported by all the compilers. Whereas with this const int, uh, variable length arrays are not actually supported everywhere. Another interesting feature of uh, macros is that, well, if we define here a simple string, so say define or read a macro that evaluates the string, let's say, I don't know, pattern or maybe question or something and say, um, my name is and then blank. And if I type in here, print F pattern, and I want to concatenate this in here with another string and say, Bob, for example, I can actually do that. Right? As strange as it looks, right? Uh, if I actually run this, I'm gonna get on the screen, my name is Bob. Why? Because, well, this guy, or this guy got replaced by this guy inside the code. So it went ahead and just copy and pasted this. And you can actually place two literal strings, one after the other in C, and they're just gonna merge together automatically, right? Whereas with a constant, if I change this to a constant, so let's say uh, const char pointer pattern equals my name is, if I try to do that, I cannot even compile the code. It's kind of obvious why, because you cannot do that with a variable, right? You would have to, maybe in some languages, you could concatenate them using a plus, right? But in our case with, with C, it's a bit more tricky. And here you cannot actually uh, concatenate them in line. We're gonna have to call another function because this pattern in here is no longer a thing that just kind of gets evaluated, gets replaced automatically with a string. No, -uh. this is actually a, uh, pointer, right? This pattern identifier is a pointer and you cannot just type in pointer and then another string and expect C to automatically um, concatenate them together, right? But if you do it at the preprocessor stage, you can actually end up with a sort of concatenation feature there. And do note here, you cannot actually do the same thing with integers. So if I have here a macro, so define, uh, let's say something like num, have the value 100. And if I try to, for example, cobble together a number saying that, okay, I want a num, but I also want it, um, have it multiplied by 10. So I just kind of add a zero here, right? And let's say I also make the format string proper so that it gets evaluated properly. So there's no issue there. But if I try to compile this, you'll notice it doesn't actually work because at the preprocessor stage, even the preprocessor has to look for identifiers, right? Just like uh, the compiler has to look for variables. In this case, uh, the preprocessor looks at this num0 num and says, well, I don't actually have a num0 identifier. I only have the num identifier. So it's not gonna actually replace this num with this num because it considers the whole uh, the whole word, the whole num0 uh, word here as an identifier and tries to find exactly that, not, not less, not more, okay? So you cannot actually do this with numbers. So then what should you actually use? Well, in modern times, it is recommended that you actually use constants in favor of uh, macros. That is because constants actually have types and they get evaluated uh, at compile time. And whenever you, for example, call a function with a, with a wrong type, you're gonna actually get a proper error. But with macros, you first get that copy and paste, that automatic copy and paste, and then you get the error with the code that was actually pasted, not the code that is in front of you. So this makes for a uh, better code legibility. And for the most part, you should be able to use constants instead of macros. One more thing you might think about when using these uh, macros, you could say that, uh, well, because the preprocessor automatically copies and pastes that value everywhere in the program, the program doesn't actually have to store that data anywhere. It doesn't have to define a variable and then dereference it every single time it tries to access it, right? So with a constant here, so if I have a constant const int 
num equals 100 and uh, let's say I just uh, use this num here well no copies or pastes are gonna happen there's gonna be a variable with an address and it's going to be actually used but in modern compilers this is a non-issue because uh, the compiler automatically does this optimization for you where it removes that variable this variable num if it sees it's not going to change the uh, code's validity it's going to work properly and faster without it right? so in this case it should work properly because num is a const it will never change right it has the value 100 and it's only uh, evaluated as a value i'm not taking its address i'm not processing its address in some strange way i'm just all i'm doing is actually evaluating its value so the compiler might see that and say oh well okay i can just copy and paste this into the final code instead of actually having a variable that i have to define therefore there's like no difference in performance between using a macro and using a constant right you you will be fine just using a constant in most cases. Now, of course, in this video, when I talked about macros, I always talked about macros that have no parameters, right? That don't evaluate to a function or anything crazy like that. They just evaluate to a certain literal, right? A bit in an integer, a string literal or something else. Macros are much more than that, right? You can do a lot more things once you have parameters in the mix. But this, this video was just comparing the constants with with macros that don't have parameters at all and just evaluate to literal values. I hope you understood now the difference between the two and I hope to see you use this const more often in your code than, uh, than macros whenever you can actually do so. As I said, with variable length arrays or certain string concatenation functions you might want to have macros, that's fine if you're not uh, overusing it but uh, as much as possible, do try to use uh, variables or really constants in this case more than uh, macros. If you do have any questions, please do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.